guys and welcome back to a brand new video here on Two Ordinary Guys. I hope you guys are well. So before I started university and started paramedic science, I wanted to know what you needed to know before starting paramedic science and I couldn't really find anything on YouTube and which is kind of the reason why I started to document my journey online on YouTube through the ambulance service and now as a student nurse as well. So I'm making this video because when I first went to look for videos on what I needed to know before starting paramedic science there wasn't any, there was websites that were kind of relevant but it wasn't from a student's um, perspective if that makes sense. So I wanted to know kind of the things I needed to know before starting paramedic science. This video isn't going to tell you everything you need to know because that's not what I want from this video. I want to kind of give you stuff that I thought you want needed to know, actually you don't, but also some advice I can give you guys having done the course before. This video is proudly sponsored by healthjobs.co.uk. So thank you guys for sponsoring this video, really, really appreciate it. If after this video you're interested, go and check them out. There's a range of different health jobs on there which you, which you can check out. If you're working towards becoming a paramedic, you can kind of see uh, the salary or maybe what different areas of the field you can work in. Also, this video will be on their YouTube page, so if you're interested and want to give me some support, then go over and check it out on there as well. That'd be really, really good. Okay, so number one is, do you need to drive? Or should I get a car? Should I learn to drive? Some universities are different, so I know from the University of Worcester, the university I attended, the there wasn't a necessity to drive. It wasn't a requirement to join, so you could join the university, you could start to train to become a paramedic, uh, a student paramedic at the university and not hold a driving license. But what you need to consider is A, does the university that you're going to or looking to go to require you to have a driving license because some do. When you do qualify from the university, if they don't require you to have a driving license is you will need to drive, obviously to drive the ambulance if you're going into that area and they require you to have a C1 as well. Paramedic science isn't always about driving the ambulance, so that's kind of where some universities will want you to maybe not have your driving license because it's not an essential, if that makes sense. Most of the time when you're working as a paramedic, you could, you probably need a driving license. I know some areas you might work on an oil rig, for example, it won't, it won't really require you to hold a driving license as such, but you'll have to check and look around, which is why healthjobs.co.uk is really, really good because it kind of tells you the requirements from that. So maybe the jobs that you're looking at, it will probably say you need to hold a driving license. But also what I found personally is I was given a placement 20, 30 miles away, which as a, you know, you could drive there in half an hour maybe, but the trains don't run at six in the morning. So sometimes I had to car share and sometimes I had to readjust my shifts so I could book them because sometimes on a Sunday, public transport just completely stops. So you have to take in, take that into consideration. Is if you're going to university, are you gonna be able to get there? And sometimes the answer will be no. Sometimes you'll be based locally and you, know, you might be able to get a taxi, which costs you a little bit more. So just take that into consideration before you do join paramedic science because I did take it into consideration but I didn't think about it enough. You also need to consider as well that if you're looking to start driving when you go to university, university is quite intense. So if you're f debating whether to get your license, do it before you start uni. That is a massive, massive tip I'd say because I've struggled now to find time around my studies in order to concentrate on my driving if you're a nervous driver like me. Now, the next one would be buying your books. <laughs> Because when I first started university, I brought all my books because I wanted to look really prepared and I, I spent probably 150, 200 pounds on buying all of the best books. I asked all in the forums on what, what best books to buy for paramedic science and blah, blah, blah. And then when I actually moved to university, I found out that the library at the university you can just, you can just borrow them at the, at the university and you can borrow them for five weeks at a time and go online and just click renew. So they're completely free. I'd always recommend checking out at your university on the library services on how good the library is, what are their requirements, how long can you borrow a book for, but also is it a really good library and talk to students maybe as well because I wish I did that. I wish I, when I first started university, I didn't just buy all the books. I could have saved 150 pounds, which would go towards travel for me for placement. Instead of just buying the books, I could have gone to the library and borrow them from there. So definitely, definitely, definitely 
consider doing this. I know some people like to have the books with them, I was the same. It's just the same as when you go to the library and you're helping out your local library as well. Something to consider, and this is just from my experience, from seeing people starting university is some people go straight from school from you know from maybe a levels they're probably 18 years old and if you don't have that much experience with communicating with people and i'm just talking about communicating with people like you know a person to a person or caring for someone that's maybe elderly or dealing with a difficult situation you've never done that before then paramedic science could be really, really difficult because obviously you're going to be doing this. I'd always recommend to have some experience beforehand. So have some experience maybe while you're at, at, at sixth form or at school or maybe do some volunteering. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be healthcare, but it's something that you can, you know, vouch for doing the job as a, as, a, as a student paramedic and as a paramedic. Don't focus solely on the experiences you need to have as a paramedic. Consider the things you might need when being a student paramedic. You might be having to transfer a patient an hour to an hour away hospital and you need to talk to them. Just have a genuine conversation. And if you're a shy person, then consider this because if you don't have a comment, you need to entertain the conversation, ask the relevant questions. And also when you're taking a history, when you're taking a good history, these, these questions come in handy and the communication is vital. Communication is one of the most important things in paramedic science and as a student paramedic as well. So these experiences, this could be working behind a bar and customer services. If you could work maybe in a care home or doing some volunteering at maybe a medical, doing some medical events and volunteering hearing sent gen ambulance is really good i always hear people talking about that i did that as well but i would say working in a care home would give you some really good experience some really good hands-on experience dealing with difficult situations you do in a care home and interacting with the elderly is a massive massive thing and a massive massive tick you can say when you've done you would face that as a first year second year third year paramedic student paramedic sorry now once you do start university paramedic science be open and ask questions because if you don't understand something ask the question that's how you learn there were situations when i was on the ambulance and i scared away of asking questions and was scared to ask feedback on how i did and how i can work on this and eventually you become afraid to ask questions because you didn't ask questions at the start of your your, your degrees i'd always say ask questions and if you feel like you're doing something wrong or you can learn from something or you've done you feel like you've done something good ask for feedback because feedback is the most important thing and get that written down get that written down in your placement document so you can look back at this and say you know i, I first started off doing this maybe you didn't do it very well and then at the end of the year the end of year three you can say actually i really improved from that now the last one of the tips i'm going to give really is to take time for yourself now this is quite a maybe a generic point um, and you've probably heard it before but it's really really important because you will see stuff that you didn't really expect to see you will be affected by things that you didn't really think will affect you and it's important to take time for yourself do things that you enjoy have a supportive network that's really really strong and always call home when you're at university and have regular contact with the people that you love and care for the most because they will give you the best support and that supportive network is really really important if you aren't already at university you won't really know the challenges that lie ahead and it's an amazing amazing course and i really really recommend you go for it like i mentioned take all the points that i mentioned beforehand the first four points and this one is just something to consider when you do go is you will see stuff that will upset you do you have that supportive network in place that will help if you do deal with stuff how do you maybe release the stress how what do you how do you deal with difficult situations uh, if you was to see them first up first hand but if you consider the course is going to be challenging then you're already half you know you're already there in the fact that you're having a conscious effort to know that this is going to be a challenging degree and as long as you work hard as long as you manage your time well but also take into consideration that it's going to be challenging and you're going to see, st see stuff and have that supportive network in place you will do okay you'll do you'll do really well i hope these tips have helped obviously there are loads of things that i want to maybe share with you guys and if you do want me to drop it down in the comments you know i've got thousands of thousands of advice that i can give to you this video isn't going to be all of them but if you want another video like this maybe sharing some more knowledge then drop it down in the comments and I will be happy to do that. But in the meantime, thank you. Make sure you do subscribe. Go and check out healthjobs.co.uk if you're interested. And I know they would really, really appreciate it. And so would I. And check out the, my description. 
because all on there there are some promo codes that you could check out but also there are some resources that you might find useful when starting paramedic science like the books that I really 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 helped me uh, when I when I was doing paramedic science as well thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video